What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay. Not really covering the Sharks today. We're covering one <laughs> Sharks adjacent person, uh, but locked on Monday. Sweden. <laughs> yeah. Locked on one particular Swede, uh, <laughs> one singular Swedish human being. But today, uh, we're coming back after the holidays. We didn't have one Friday because it was Christmas Eve for us. Who the hell is going to listen to that? Um, if you don't There's celebrate our holidays, sorry, sorry, <laughs> we do. So we were busy. Um, obviously, there's no sharks games to talk about anyway. There's yeah. no sharks news, nothing. So, uh, we're back though, but uh, as is custom on Boxing Day or whatever Americans call it, December 26th, just a regular day on the calendar. <laughs> yeah, uh, the world junior starts and San Jose has somebody there. So, we're going to talk a little bit of world juniors, talk a little William Eklund, and then we'll uh, get you out of here on this probably holiday Monday for everybody. No, I'm back at work. You didn't get Monday off, like for because Christmas is on Saturday. Nah, your country sucks. <laughs> yep. You're locked on Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Yeah. Whenever there's a holiday on the weekend in Canada, you get like the Monday off to make up for it because we got the Friday off. So, but yeah, weird. Yeah. Most companies on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve are just like go home at like one o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's no need to be here anymore. Nothing, nobody's doing anything. I'm your host, Kyle Demetrius. And back with me as always is my co-host, JD, the mm, Krampus to my St. Nick. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't think of another evil Santa situation. Yeah. Is there another evil Santa? There could be, but um, I don't know. Oh no, what's the one like the Dutch or isn't that Krampus? In... No, there's like uh, another one. Like maybe it is Sweden or something. But I'm like... not Dutch, so I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, where they? Yeah, he's like eats children's soul. It's not Krampus, but it's very similar to Krampus. So, yes. Let me see. Big Krampus. Mouth just did an episode on it. Krampus like yeah. creatures. <laughs> so, well, you know, there's Lucy. No, uh, the Yule Lads in Iceland. That's it, I think. Yeah, the Yule Lads, maybe. Uh, gorilla yeah. Pear Fuit Fuitar. I can't speak these languages. Yeah. Uh, Yola Kotarin is the Icelandic Yule cat. No. Oh, Belschnickel. Belschnickel. <laughs> yes. Belschnickel. Uh, anyway, uh, you don't have to be. You don't have to be uh, Krampus if you don't want to. Anyway, so I can be, yeah. I can be Krampus. I want to be Krampus. Sure. Did it's you like have a good holiday? Go yeah. Um, sort of. I don't know. It was all right. What about you? It was good. Uh, a lot of family here. So yeah. So it was our first time hosting uh, Christmas. Did you in smoke the-, the turkey on the Traeger? Uh, I did prime rib on the Traeger. Nice. Was it an so- Omaha steak? Very much so. And I'm Hell yeah. Sick. Yes. Hell yeah. That's amazing. Um, let's talk. Let's talk some hockey. The World Juniors have started. San Jose probably wasn't going to have a lot of people to start off with, but Thomas Bordalo got the vid again. Well, last year I guess he he was like a close contact with Beecher or yeah. whatever, so he got cut. And um, this year he got it, and so USA cut him. Big blow to Team USA. He would have been there. Two C. Two two C. Who's their one C? Behind Maddie Beneers. So, yeah. So, it's pretty uh, good just, at hockey. Just like Michigan. Himself. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like real life uh, yes. at school. So, that's a big blow to um, USA. He would have been one of their better players, which leaves San Jose down to just the savior of the franchise, William Ackland. Yeah. Who is uh, the one C su- for Sweden. Yes. I was a little surprised Gushin didn't even get like a invite. Like, it seemed like. The Russian teams just didn't bring any of their North American players. Yeah, so Russia is a little weird, but not really. It's pretty know. standard Russian operating procedure. Yeah, you gotta be in Russia to be Russian. It's it's the way they roll, and they've done shit like this before, obviously. So uh, yeah, kind of shitty because um, Gushin's good. <laughs> well, yeah, and they the two defensemen uh, that they that they were missing too. Uh, Danil uh, Yurov is it Yurov? sure yeah whatever his name is uh and the other guy that they're escaping me right now but they would have really helped out because russia's defense is a mess um they have the they have the russian tyler myers on their team shakir muhammad muhammadulin 
He's <laughs> like six foot a million and is a okay, uh, Russian chaos giraffe. Uh, Russia does not look very good. Um, no. They played, we're recording this after Russia. Sweden played. Sweden won. It was 6 3 with the empty netter. Yeah. Um, Russia did not look good. It was Yar- Yaroslav Askarov got pulled after the second period. Uh, the Swedish power play, I think, had four goals. Uh, yeah, and then, they and had a short handed goal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By Simon Edmondson, of all people. Uh, they're, Sim- they're top uh, Simon Edmondson's been really good. Uh, oh, he's so good. He's very good, yes. Because, uh, like, when we did the draft, pro, you know, we were like, he's got really insane high potential, but like, just really raw, um, mm-hmm. you know. But I think you and I liked him a little more um, just because he can skate really well. Uh, he gets, one yeah, thing. it's kind of like Swedish uh, Owen Power, where it's like he's big, he can skate, and then like you see Owen Power this year has been putting it together for Michigan, oh, yeah. and like uh, Simon Evanson has been playing very, very well too. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm still taking William Eklund <laughs> out of all. Yeah, I prefer so, William Eklund. Yeah. So William Eklund, let's let's. Uh... I don't know who's yeah. first, me or you. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, he had two. two no, no, oh, no. We no got, we're going to make money first. Jeez. We do have to make money. Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us about our favorite snack? I'm not going to say the joke I had. But okay. if you're looking for bar form and you can't find your power sauce bars uh, because they're sold out, can't harness the power of apples, uh, why not grab a built Bar? We're coming through the holiday season here. Everybody celebrated whatever holiday they celebrated. Maybe you just took the days off work, relaxed on the week, but now we're coming into New Year's. It's the time of year where days are just made up in between Christmas and New Year's. So maybe you get a little hungry. Maybe you got to do, maybe you got some birthdays. My mom's birthdays this week. Really weird. My dad's birthday is coming up right after New Year's. I have friends' birthdays. We've got New Year's in general. You're sitting around waiting for your New Year's party to start. It's like five o'clock. You don't really know want to eat because there's going to be food there. If you're a little hungry, why not grab a built bar? Because Built Bar will help you satisfy that hunger craving because it's filled with protein, not a lot of sugar, not a lot of all the bad stuff. And it tastes good too because it's covered in 100% real chocolate. And they have a million different flavors and you can find your favorite. Raspberry, Mint Brownie, JD's favorite, Cherry Barcia. Our joint favorite, Coconut Brownie, which is amazing. Please send us more. They have new flavors all the time like the, the poofs, the puffs. The marshmallow puff ones, there was like a key lime one, which is really good. There's a caramel almond one, which was really good. There's all sorts of different stuff. So just jump over to their website, built.com, and check it out. Order a box of your favorites. Order a mix box so you can try them all. Figure out which one your favorite is. Figure out what you want and just go from there. And when you go to built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. So use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. So Willie, slick Willie, leading the tournament in points. <laughs> I think I think he's actually tied with uh, Emil on, on Andrea. Andrea, I don't know how to say that guy's last name. It looks like Emil Andre, but it's said a little differently. Um, he had a golden assist, but William Eklund, two assists, um, a secondary, and then the primary on Alex Holtz's power play goal, which is so nice. Yeah, and he had he screened on the first goal, which didn't get on the score sheet for that, but that was uh, yeah, he was doing doing what we wanted him to do right like he wants to go out we he should be one of the best players on the ice and i thought he was one of the best players on the ice him and simon edison i think were the probably the two best players for sweden so uh yeah. outside of uh wallstead which uh, well, how much Wallstedt of you had the unluckiest 900 save percentage game of all time simon edmondson scored on him and he had another lucky one just go off matt Vey mitchkov shot it from the corner and it went off william eklund's stick, stick and like and fluttered off. off like the back of his head and he wasn't even it was he played way better than his score line like he was he was awesome he's clearly yeah and the one goal where he had, like the dude like ran into him and they're like that was yeah, that's a goal. yeah, <laughs> yeah like, he <laughs> had it and they i don't under, really understand how they counted that but yeah. uh hey mitchkov was falling and knocked it out of his I guess, yeah. and then also knocked Wallstead. Are you uh, watching Wallstead? Are you just like a little? I mean, uh, granted, we love uh, Eklund, and we would pick Eklund over Wallstead. But aren't you just a little like a little part of you is just like, man, I really wish I get to root for Wallstead for <laughs> the next like twelve years. Uh, a little bit. I was I was pretty high on the Wallstead train early on, um, especially because San Jose has no goalie pipeline to speak of at the time, uh, and they added to it with uh, Benjamin Goudreau. Yeah. I mean, no offense to Benjamin Goudreau, friend of the show. He's just not Jesper Wallstead. He, yeah. he maybe in the in the long term he may turn out better. We don't know. I don't have a crystal ball, but as of this moment in time, 
Jesper Wal- Jesper Wallstead's probably gonna be playing in the NHL next year. Yeah. Um, so it is, it is, but I mean, if 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 they didn't take Eklund and they took somebody random, that's not very good. And instead, Wallstead was there, you'd be more upset. But because they have William Eklund, it, it's yeah. kind of balances out. He was he was so good, like on the on the uh, the goal, the first goal, like you said, with the screen, it's on the power play. He wins the draw and gets it back. They set up, and it's kind of interesting. They put William Eklund in the corner, sort yeah. of like on the goal line. So when he gets the puck, he's actually looking. So his net will be like to his left or to his right, like almost off his shoulder, and his whole body is open to the middle of the ice so he can I pass liked it. it. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. So he can either try to – he tried it later on in the game. He tried to just jam it in on kind of like a little wraparound. He can also try to get it to the guy in the middle. He can get it to the defenseman on his side. Um, and with the Holtz goal, he passed it cross seam to Holtz, who was open. So it's really interesting. But on the first goal, he wins the draw, finds his little spot, waits till he gets passed around. It comes over to, I believe it's Oscar Olison. Yep. He's getting ready to shoot. And he sneaks in from behind the defense. They don't see him because he's in his little spot. And then he goes with the jumping screen, which is awesome because Yaroslav Askarov is 6'4". Um, so you got to kind of is not six, four, not six, four. Um, so you kind of, kind of get in his way a little bit, a little bit creatively. And William Eklund jumped at the perfect time and laid down the screen. Askarov went down and couldn't see. Um, yep. it's just, we talked also, about when he's, I drafted. mean, Eklund almost had a, on the breakaway too, where he had one in Askarov, uh, it stuck through his five hole and then the defender cleared it out. So, I mean, Eklund could, have, had, <laughs> uh, yeah, could have had a, a goal and two assists today. So, yeah. Um, he had another shot too that uh, that I believe was saved, but yeah, that breakaway was really nice because he got it with space and he he was like centimeters away from from having a goal. But uh, you yep. can just tell the high level thinking that the guy's got. Like, it's if you look at his SHL numbers, they suck because U Garden is the worst hockey team on the planet. Uh, they're the Arizona Coyotes. <laughs> <laughs> they're so bad. The if if you if you if you talk to uh, we've had um, Swedish scouts like Patrick Bexel um and mikhail holm on um especially mikhail holm if you go to his twitter feed he's like yeah if william eklund had anybody worth a shit on his line on his team he would be able he would have way more points you mean, third line winger marcus Sor- marcus Sorensen just doesn't do it for you <laughs> no so um he just has nothing to work with and he, he's obviously playing a lot better he's the one c for sweden um yeah. he's playing with alexander holtz who's some people would say is the best player on the team uh best forward um, he's a year older. He was drafted mm-hmm. seventh overall by New Jersey in 2020. Uh, he's very, very good. He was Alex Holtz was part of the combo with Lucas Raymond growing up called the Terror Twins because uh, they That's played on either good. wing, which is an amazing nickname. <laughs> yes. um, it's too bad Lucas Raymond is killing it with Detroit because the top line would have been Raymond uh, Eklund Holtz, which oh would have just God. been absolutely bonkers. Yes. Um, so, but it, I, I think he had, a, I think he had a good first game. It's, it's always. World Juniors, you kind of get into a swing. A lot of times, you, if you come out, they were playing Russia, who's in shambles, sort of. They're kind of bad, but at the same time, they're still a powerhouse team. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's a tough game to get into right away. But I, I thought he looked, I thought he looked good. I don't know about you, but he was throwing down the body. He was back checking. He's making passes. He was doing everything you want to see. And I think um, as the tournament goes on and he gets his chemistry back with like Holtz and stuff like that, it'll be quite nice. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited about Eklund's first game here, and you know, like you said, it's 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 good to see him kind of doing what we expect him to do, you know. And it's not just like not just the offensive stuff, but like you said, the back check and and doing that type of stuff. I know, like at first they were, you know, Sweden was kind of a little hemmed into against Russia, like, especially in that beginning of the first period. But then it was like once they kind of found their groove, and then you know, Sweden, that's going to be their thing is their power play is, you know, and they made Russia pay for it. And it's, it's, it's good to see that he's kind of got like a special role in that power play. And that, yeah, that he's weird. on power play one. He's, yeah, he's power the play one. On power like, play one. yeah. So yeah, it's good to see, good to see Eklund doing Eklund things. And, uh, I count the days until he's back in San Jose. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I mean, he's playing out the season in New Garden and then 2022 training camp. He's back. Like, there's no way to do it. I, no... I really hope I really hope he just crushes this tournament because he, he has all the talent in the world to do it. And he's on the right line. And I think Sweden's pretty good. They disappoint internationally a lot. Yeah. Um, they haven't won gold since 2012. Uh, weird little quirk at the World Juniors. The last nine winners are all United States, Canada, and Finland. They've each won three times <laughs> over the last nine years. And then in, in 2012, Sweden won um, to, to kind of break that streak. But uh, yeah, they're, they kind of, they have Wallstedt, 
who is the best goalie in the world, not in the NHL probably. So um, yeah. they have him backstopping them. They have a pretty okay defense, especially if Simon Edmonton's putting it all together. Uh, mm-hmm. And their forwards, their top two lines are, are really nasty. And then they got some depth guys um, working it. So they have a shot. Also, shout out to Leo Loof. What a great name. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what an amazing name but um excited to see Eklund uh, Eklund go on so he's in so Sweden is in group uh B, B. Yep. Boop, 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 boop. so it's Sweden USA Slovakia Switzerland Russia they obviously took care against Russia they should absolutely hammer fist Switzerland and Slovakia even though Slovakia has Yuri Slavkovsky my boy mm-hmm. um and I believe they also have Nemec on defense uh, don't quote me on that he might be Yes, I believe they do. Um, so United States will be the game uh, that really tests Sweden. That'll be Sweden USA probably for first in the pool, especially because Russia already lost to Sweden. Um, unless Russia can somehow beat the US. Uh, Which and then, the way the US played against uh, Finland the other day, they gave up. Like I know it was the, but yeah, they gave up like not a pretty ending to that game. So yeah, Sweden's in the draft. See, Sweden's looking good. They they beat Russia. They got to beat Russia in the United States if you want to finish first in your group. So, um, yeah. and that means that they will play the fourth place team in the other division if they finish first. The other division is Finland, Canada, Czechia, Austria, Germany. Not a lot of heavyweights there. Uh, Finland, Canada will duke it out for first. Um, and then that well, Canada, means- as we're recording this, Canada's losing right now to Czechia. So yeah, three two. Uh, yeah. Canada's a mess. Uh, they'll, they'll pull that out, though. I have faith. <laughs> yeah. Most likely, so if, if Sweden finishes first, um, they're going to end up playing probably Germany or Czechia. Um, Germany's got a little program on the rise. Um, so yeah. we'll see there. But Yeah, Germany probably, lost a lot of talent um, after like Sturzel and Insider uh, uh, and, Sider and, and uh, JJP left and stuff. So, yeah. Oh, JJP um, didn't, isn't on the team. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Interesting. Right um yeah so well let's get into let's get into some more broad world junior talk but first let's talk about our friends over at bet online bet lines got you covered this holiday season with more props odds and lines than ever before as football continues its march towards uh the playoffs and college bowl season is upon us bet online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season Head over to their website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the promo code Locked On to receive your bonus. From basketball, football, NHL, boxing, UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Battle is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports, so don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing new offers available. Bet online, where the game starts. All right, Kyle. So, who's winning this whole sucker? <laughs> I said Sweden. Uh, yeah, I'm not. He, I'm not sure because like they they underperform internationally, and I don't, I don't, I don't know how confident you want to go I the am. Homer USA or Homer Canada pick. So, I mean, I picked them to finish second. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, Canada. I don't know. Canada is weird. They didn't bring Brant Clark with them. Uh, so they have all lefties on their team and he's would have been the only, he's good as well. Uh, I don't have no idea why they didn't More bring Brant Brant Clark. Clark. <laughs> Canada does this all the time and they do it with the Olympic team too, where they just like galaxy brain themselves into these weird decisions. They build a team, not a team of all stars. So they'll end up taking like random goofball fourth liners that are like, yeah, he provides gumption. And it's like, why wouldn't you just take a really good player and just have four <laughs> sick lines? They do no. this all the time. <laughs> it's so stupid. Uh, so they didn't take Brant Clark. Uh, they have Connor Bedard as the 13th forward right now. I don't know why they're not just loading him up on a line with somebody sick and going to town. I guess anytime you can play Zach LaRue <laughs> instead of Connor Bedard, you got to do it. But um, like Will Kyle, Kylie, Killy, whatever that guy's name is, mm-hmm. he's playing wing. And I really don't understand why uh, he's just like a big bruising guy. Just put Connor Bedard out there and let him go nuts. It'd be sick. They did for a minute there in the game. We're recording during the Canada uh, Czechia game. Um, they did have a line of Perfetti, Wright, Bedard, which was amazing. Uh, that was yeah, that was awesome. Uh, so I don't know why they're not doing that. And then also they're starting Dylan Garand uh, in goal, but they also have Sebastian Kosa on the team, who's having a stellar season. And they scratched picked- him. Yeah, picked ahead of Wallstead. Ahead of Wallstead. Yeah, Detroit yeah. went Detroit went crazy on that one. But um yeah, Kosa's benched. It's Dylan Brochu 
or is it Dylan Brochu? Anyway, Brochu is the backup. Uh, Dylan Garand is the starter. Garand's having a good season, but like I have no idea why Kosa is not the backup or fighting for the thing. Yeah. He had a bad preseason, uh, pre tournament game where he led in three goals and 11 shots. But I mean, at the same time, sometimes it's, it just happens. I, yeah. I just really confused by what Canada is doing. They have all the talent in the world, but I mean, I don't know. It's tough. Who, as Sharks fans, who should we keep just a little bit of an eye on for next year's, uh, for the upcoming draft? I know you, you mentioned uh, Brad Lambert, um, how he is a potential fit for the Sharks. So. Yeah, Ooh. I'm sure when we get Will Scouch on, he'll uh, he'll praise the sing the praises of Brad Lambert, uh, yeah. which would be which would be awesome. Um, so I'm gonna talk about guys like just give some names that are in the back half of that top ten, uh, like the teens around that ten mark. Um, so if Brad Lambert falls somehow, or if San Jose gets shittier and they can pick up Brad Lambert at like seven <laughs> or something like that, that's awesome. Really yes. love that. Um, love that for them. But then you've got guys like again in the Czechia game, uh, David Yerchek. He's a defenseman. Um, they could be looking at that if they're going defense. The U.S. Um, has Frank Nazar. He's like a 5'10 uh, winger, uh, which would be cool. So he's going to be around that around that area. Um, you're looking at Nemich, but he's going to be up a little bit higher probably. Uh, you want to look at Yuri Slavkovsky. Plays uh, for Slovakia. He's a 6'4 winger. Um, he's awesome. I really like him. He, if he falls, that would be it. That would be a really good uh, option for them. Uh, guys like Rutger McGroarty, um could could be a possibility. There's not a Logan, real person. <laughs> it's not a real person, but uh, <laughs> I mean, he's he's there. Uh, there's some good names like Logan Cooley's a great name, but he's worked Ooh. his way up. He's an American, uh, so is Rutger McGroarty. Matt Logan Cooley's worked his way up um, into like the top bit. Uh, Brad Lambert's running mate on on Finland, who's passed him, Joachim Kemmel. Um, he's also kind of hopped Brad Lambert, uh, into that like top five ish area. Um, so keep an eye on him just in case he may fall. The draft after Shane Wright is kind of all over the place. Um, Danila Yurov plays for Russia, but I think he's also a little bit higher. So, um, yeah, I'd say Brad Lambert is definitely one. Uh, David Yurichek, Yuri Slavkovsky, Rutger McGrorty. Um, yeah, I, I would, I would start there and keep your eye on them. Plus those are fun teams to watch as USA. Um, that's, that's Czechia and Slovakia and Finland. So like, that's a little bit interesting um, on Canada. I don't really know if anybody will be in that range, but we're a long way out from the draft. So um, I'm sure we'll update again as, as, uh, as the tournament goes on. There's also another Jack Hughes. This one's Jack D Hughues and he's not related to them. That's me. So <laughs> uh, it was Northeast. <laughs> yeah, that, that's you. Um, obviously, Follow us along on social media as we get more in the tournament. We'll cover William Eklund um, extensively because he's the only one there. Uh, so if you want to let us know or ask us anything about the World Juniors, particularly me, uh, because I'm Canadian, it's just like part of my life. You can do that on Twitter at Locked On Sharks. Uh, you can do that on Facebook and Instagram as well. Leave us a comment, leave us a note, ask us a question. We will see it. Locked On Sharks across the board. We're almost at 500 people on YouTube. So subscribe there if you want to watch us do stuff. I'm wearing a burnt orange Lululemon hoodie and a toque. It's great. Uh, JD's wearing a t-shirt and he has a Christmas tree in the background. So it's nice. It's very festive. You're listening to us. You know where to find us. Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, Anchor, Amazon Music, whatever. Like You're doing it. Uh, email, LockedInSharks at gmail.com. We haven't got one in a while. Thank you for your service. JD is at my fry hole. Uh, Kyle is at Kyle Demetrius. Uh, I think you could probably hear a bunch of children running around behind me. Uh, but they are at one, two, three Clovis Lane. <laughs> yeah, one, two, three Fake Street. Um, thank you for making us your first listen. Go check out any of the other amazing podcasts. Uh, go check out the Locked On Now uh, podcast on YouTube, where it's all to keep up with everything NHL. It's kind of cool where you can uh, get all the nows in one place to keep up with everything that's going on in the NHL. Um, and go check out uh, one of your favorites, like Locked On Gamecocks. There you go. <laughs> I hope that's a real one. Sure. <laughs> Sounds like it's real. This should be real. <laughs> that's go just us. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, friends. <laughs>